Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you saw by the title of this video, we are gonna be working on the engine bay. I already got these two big plates off. I had covered up a lot of the bare metal that you'd seen and removed all the seam sealer. I already went ahead and made paper templates of all of the holes on the firewall. My buddy Justin, who's the owner of Jack's Fab Shop here in Jacksonville, Florida, has a bunch of laser machines and all kinds of equipment to cut out some really nice templates for us. So I'm going to bring the paper cutouts that I have. He's gonna scan them in his machine and use his laser to get those all perfectly cut for us. So let's head over there and check it out. So we're back as you saw a super cool process really good guys over there they support me and a lot of the stuff that i do we have all of the template cutouts here so we can patch all the firewall also while we were there i went ahead and snagged a bunch of dom bent tube that he has that was in his big scrap pile i want to reinforce these strut towers so what we're going to do is tie them in from the actual strut tower come down and around down to the frame rail he had a bunch of bends. I tried all kinds of different stuff and I actually ended up finding two that were identical. I obviously cleaned them up a little bit and they're gonna go something just like this here. Obviously I still need to cut it to size. I got some flat bar that we're gonna weld in for some mounting plates. So let's go ahead and start working on that so we can get those finished off and then we'll start working on the firewall. See if we can complete this engine bay in this video. All right, so we have our two bends I was showing you. The first thing that we want to do is get these cut down so it's flush with the strut tower and flush with the frame rail. I'm gonna start on this longer end of the frame rail. So I'm gonna hold it right in about the position I want it to be and come down here and I can pretty much see the plane that the frame rail already is riding on. So I am going to just roughly match that. And this will give us pretty much a rough cut on getting it level with the frame rail. And I'm going to be MIG welding this, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're still going to get it very close. Now I know that was not the most efficient way to cut this. I have a bandsaw and the blade is completely toast, so I'll have to go get one soon. All right, so we'll see how that fits up here. It's not bad. There's a little bit of a gap here. So what you want to do is just file down the material that's actually touching to lower that down. So we'll get down here and take a look. Okay, we're touching this point. So we'll just shave down these little parts right here. Come back, check it again. Alright, not too shabby at all. There's still a tiny little gap, but I'll just touch this up one more time. We'll get it good. And the next part that we want to go ahead and do is just shave this down here. And as you cut it, that contact patch will get bigger and bigger. Something like that. All right, so here's this piece cut. The fit up is pretty good, I'm happy with it, but we can't just weld it in. We need to cut some plates to go at the contact points where it meets on the frame rail and on the strut tower. So we'll get those cut out, get them welded in, and then we can start welding these bars in. And I'm gonna wanna make a plate that's gonna go around this. So we can go, I kinda wanna follow the body lines, the natural curves of this car. I think we'll come down onto this. So I got the thinnest writing paper that I could out of my daughter's notebook. 
something I could just barely see the black marker through it. Traced out our template here, worked out just fine. So now I'm gonna transfer this over to some metal so we can have a nice base plate here to weld the tube on. And also something to note that both of these strut towers are identical. So I can just take that template from the other side, flip it around, and it'll match up exactly the same. So we have two identical pieces that are gonna meet in the same exact spot. And there's our template. I'm gonna flip this over to make the passenger side one. All right, so I got this plate all made. I had to clamp it in the vise and put a little bit of a bend in it. And now it sits perfectly flush right where we want it to. Just like that. Cool, I'm happy with it. Let's go ahead and get this all ground down. We'll get it welded in. All right, so the next part we need to do is at the frame rail where the other end of the tube is gonna meet, I went ahead and made this template that's gonna go just right here. So we'll get that cut out and get it welded onto the frame. Okay. All right, so I went ahead and got this base plate welded up. It actually is looking pretty decent. It got kind of funny right here where there's three layers of metal. There's really not too much I could do. I did my best. I will honestly say that's acceptable for me. I'll take that all day long. So now I need to prep the ends of this bar a little bit better. And we're going to get it mounted up just like so. All right, so I got it all cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a quick coat of steel it, just so it won't rust, and then we'll move on to the passenger side. Same thing with the other side, we're gonna hit this with some steel it, just so it doesn't rust at all. We can still come back, weld over it, fabricate on it, whatever we need, no problem. Okay, so I got both bars in, and I took a tape measure to really every corner I could, and it is almost 
perfectly identical. So I'm super happy with that. Seeing as these were just some scrap pieces that I found. So it looks really good. I'm happy with it. Like I said, the welds aren't perfect, but I mean, it's totally acceptable. So from here, we're gonna take some of these plates that Justin at Jack's Fab Shop had cut us out. And we're gonna start getting these thrown in so we can begin patching all the holes and all the firewall. Let's get it. So as you can see, for most of the welding to the chassis, I'm doing this start and stop method, which I know isn't ideal, but with the welder I'm using, it's a Hobart 140, which is a good unit, but it's either too hot or not hot enough. I probably should have used a little bit thinner metal for the patches I'm putting in, but nonetheless, doing it this way, I got really good penetration all the way around, and for just being some firewall plates, it'll work out just fine. Yeah, it gets hard on those layers and stuff, but... So the plates I'm welding in at the top of the firewall here have an eighth inch lip around the entire thing and I really didn't want the plates that I'm welding on to be floating so I ground this lip down on both this side and the driver's side so the plates would sit flush against the firewall. All right, so I got a lot of the big holes filled. This one turned out pretty decent, except for up here where there's this lip. You see the lip is all the way around this one. I had grinded it all the way down so it was flat so I could just plate over it, but I can't get a grinder or hardly a welder up in there, but it is good enough. It's sealed, just not the prettiest, but I mean, it's the least visible weld anyway, so it works out. Okay, so I finished up all of the welding on the firewall, minus this one plate that's gonna go up here. The windshield wiper motor sits right in this spot and it recesses down into this hole a good bit. So I'm gonna have to slowly cut away at this plate and the wiper motor can sit down, recessed into that, and we'll kind of just build around it if that makes sense. I did just get this one welded and I cleaned it and it turned out way better. I was trying a few different methods. I was trying kind of like a stop and go. I was trying to just burn it in real good, which actually worked really well, but it blew through in a couple spots. So once you paint it and there's an engine in here, none of these things are gonna stand out at all. So it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. It's just to keep any fluids or fire or anything separated from the cab where I'm sitting and the engine itself. So from here, what we need to do is get our windshield wiper motor here. And it actually sits recessed into that hole like I was saying. So if we get it in here where it's supposed to be, we can kind of see where it's making contact and where we need to start cutting. So let me grab a marker and mark some of this up and we'll start getting this hole open. So I grabbed my M12 three inch angle grinder. This little thing has become my new favorite tool. I don't know if you guys have noticed in every video, this thing comes out at some point. It's tight, it's compact. You can get into the little spaces and it is just fantastic for automotive stuff. We're almost there. It looks like we're gonna need to open up for this entire thing. The hole's gonna be a little bigger than I expected, but that's okay. All right, I got the windshield wiper bolted in. You can see there's good clearance all the way around. So I'll just need to build a box around that and that'll be all good. And then we will have the entire firewall sealed off officially from the inside of the cab. So 
So I got my shape of the cutout that I need to make. So what I'm gonna do now is put the windshield wiper motor back in here. And I'm gonna come to the inside and I'm gonna measure my depth on how deep the shell needs to be that I'm gonna kind of make to go around this. And I'll get that measurement and I will just add it to each side. And what we'll do once we have that measurement is we'll cut the whole thing out, including each corner, and we'll fold it all over. And then we'll weld that up so it's like a box. And we'll take that box right on the underside, throw it up in here, weld it around, and then this will all be enclosed. So if we come in here and we go to about the deepest part of this, we're maybe at an inch and a half to clear. I think an inch and a half will be perfect. So what I'll do is I'll probably just go an inch and three quarters to be safe. And then we know we'll be good. And then I'll take my shape. And like I said, I'm going to add an inch and three quarters to each side. These aren't perfectly straight. Like, I don't know if you can tell on camera, this has a little bit of a curve to it. It's not a big deal. I'm going to treat this as one side. And if I have to shave a little bit of the middle so it's flush, then it is what it is. All right, so I cut out the shape and cut out all my corners. So now we're gonna just fold all this up and we can see where they overlap and we can cut it so all the corners will meet up nicely and make a nice box. So we got the piece all cut out that I need to bend up. So we're gonna mark up where the bends need to go and we'll clamp it in the vise and just start bending it over. So as you see, we transferred over the paper template on the metal. I figure there's no reason to really show you guys that. It's pretty straightforward. And now I need to deal with getting creative and bending this up. It obviously is not a square. And this thing put up a hell of a fight, mainly because I don't have a press break or anything. But still, nonetheless, I had to hammer it. I had to stand on it. I had to just pull out all the tricks that I had to try and get this done with the tools that I had. But we ended up getting it, and it turned out looking pretty good. All right, so I got this hammered in. The gaps are kind of big, but I didn't weld any of the corners yet. But I have the depth set, so what I think I'm gonna do is just throw a couple tacks where it's touching, and then I'll hammer it out and finish welding it out, and whatever lip is left, I'll just grind it down so it's all nice and smooth. Okay, got it all boxed out as you saw. I bent it up to size, hammered it up in there till it was the right depth, and then just welded it and cut off the excess metal. It's all welded in. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. I might end up just filing all this smooth. Regardless, once you cover it with a coat of paint, it's not really gonna notice. Every other person I've seen with a one series has just used the factory piece here, but I really wanted to use metal and completely seal off this firewall. I was just holding this up to it and it is perfect. We have maybe a quarter inch of clearance under there. Fantastic. So after I built the box around the windshield wiper motor and the top of the firewall, I went around the entire engine bay and spot welded every seam that I could physically get to. It took a lot of time and turned out really good, but unfortunately I don't have any of the footage as I lost that SD card, but you'll see in the remainder of the video that the engine bay is nice and spot welded.
I got I got about three or four coats on there and it's looking pretty good. Not too shabby. It is so satisfying having shaved wheel wells and it just freshly painted. It's gonna be great for leaks, servicing, working on stuff. It's gonna be able to keep it nice and clean. So now we just need to do the most satisfying part and that is pulling off all of the sheet that is taped off. All right guys, so we now have the engine bay 100%. It is all finished. Wheel wells are all grinded down. I welded the back side of the plate so I don't have to add any of my own seam sealer. Strut towers are reinforced. I spot welded every bit that I could get to. The entire firewall is sealed off. There isn't one speck of light that goes through here, minus where the steering column and brake booster is gonna be. Everything is painted. It's all looking really good. I went kind of overkill on sealing off like the wheel well and the firewall but i really want to be safe in case there is a fire i'll at least you know not get hit with any flames and have enough time to get out of the car before anything crazy happens so that's it on this video we got the engine bay 100 percent done in the next videos we're just going to keep on doing fab work i got a lot of cool stuff we're doing inside the car we need to put the cage in rear radiator quick change cover all kinds of stuff we're going to put on here so stay tuned for that and thank you guys for watching this video i'll see you on the next one later